I keep thinking about the way things are going in the world around us. How quickly our dynamics are recklessly evolving towards an unknown. Too quickly, I'm afraid. Changes are coming, and at a pace we can't fathom, and too often can't cope with. Our default reaction is to drop valuable behavior and enriching experiences gained over many generations, and at a blink of an eye, replace them with destructive manners and unproductive superficial habits. Change has always been a good thing, that's for sure, but only if it's for the better. So, how are we changing exactly? The warning signs have been there for a long time. First, it was the neighborhood bookshops that dwindled to a scarce few. One after the other, doors closed and family-run businesses withered into oblivion. The next regression was when the larger bookstores began to struggle themselves. Initially the predators, it was time for these consolidating monsters to become the prey. They too started shutting their expanded doors when a booming technology reduced their state of being to one of danger. The only remaining book fortresses nowadays are public libraries. They are weathering the times only because they are sustained by emotion through public funding or private charity. A fortunate relationship that expects no financial return so far. But the danger is lurking and if not careful, even these bastions of knowledge are susceptible to eradication. Today, their importance and value lie within our hearts. But if the coming generations never experience such magic and avoid the construct of irreplaceable memories worth their weight in gold, the end and ultimate extinction will be unavoidable. To avoid such a disaster, let us recall together the priceless journey we've all taken from the earlier stages of childhood until our senior years of life. We share this powerful, happy, and collective memory that has become a substantial part of our being and hopefully will remain a significant part of the practical and emotional encoding of generations yet to come. As an adult, a library visit is the closest feeling one gets to the nostalgia of walking into a toy store as a child of six. So much on offer, so little time, so many things we want to take home with us. But with all that heightened excitement, also come disorientation, confusion, and frustration of what to read, where to look, and hopefully, being able to actually find our books. Now, where do we start? If we have a predisposed inkling of what book we want to grasp in our hands, then we are at a slight advantage. But this does not guarantee a smooth and efficient discovery process. The path to finding a book can often lead to the unearthing of many cerebral gems, a truly engrossing yet misguided adventure at that. There are two methods to any search, a predetermined book corresponding to our specific desires, or an ad hoc process driven by our voracious appetite for reading at the time. Like any treasure hunt, we follow the clues that have been granted to us. A title, the name of an author, a genre, or even a subject matter. We start off calm and collected to find our predetermined knowledge. With a steadily diminishing discipline, our search broadens as our mind's greed and curiosity surges. So much is being triggered, mentally and sensually. 
our gifts of sight, touch, and even smell are sparked into high acuteness and awareness. During this process, the credo, never judge a book by its cover, is out the window. Book covers, for a split second, become the windows to their soul. And at this moment, we want more and more. We want to consume everything. We try to refocus back to how we started. The trance is overpowering, and we are all over the place, both literally and figuratively. The chaos within our mind persists and ascends to a crescendo that comes crashing down once we have the satisfaction of possessing what we have resolved to possess. But what was originally one book searched is now 12 books found. Our search is over. And now that we have in hand the items of our intellectual contentment, we're about to be immersed in the first tastings of a plethora of fictional or factual pleasures. The ritual is sacred. Front cover, then back cover, then preface, and finally a random invasion of the book's body. The courtships begin, one book after the other. A dance where our openness for knowledge is countered by the book's abilities to attract, both mentally and physically. If no connection ensues, then the book is put down with haste. Such a waste. But when a bond is realized, then we enter a hallucinatory state of consciousness that feels as if we're within a dream. Into the book's rabbit hole we descend, until there is no more time, no more reality, and self has completely vanished. Over and over again. Book up, book unhappily down. Book up, book excitedly down. The ones put in sadness will be forgotten for the day. Whereas the ones put down in excitement have formed their everlasting neural connections within our minds. They now belong to us and we, momentarily, prisoners to them. It ends with a crash and the reading hall comes back into focus. The last book has been put down. The shock of our sudden awareness rocks our numbed fantasy. We recognize our reality. We have departed the twilight zone and our exciting trip has ended. What remains are two stacks, one with glorious books that have made the challenging cut, vibrating with endless energy and great potential, while another rejected dark stack sadly lies on the table, alone, eventually returning to the depths of the library's ocean, temporarily forgotten until baited again. We gather the valuable treasure and move to formalize our find. Upon completion, our excitement resurfaces. We have done it. Achieved more than what we ever expected. We will leave this edifice not only with the books we now possess, but with new interests and expanded inspiration. A refreshed yearning for more knowledge triggered by a resurgence of curiosity has been realized for our next library visit. We exit the reading room a little sadder than when we entered. We leave the library a little happier than when we arrived. So many emotions, so alive. We're losing our connection to physical books and more sadly, losing our relationship to libraries. As our attention veers carelessly elsewhere, we risk the full irrelevance of those cathedrals of knowledge. And if such an actuality is realized, 
then libraries will only exist within the memories of a few more generations to come. Next time you struggle with energy and emotions due to life's circumstances, go check out a library. Next time you struggle with focus and attention deficits due to our technologically infused way of life, go check out a library. Next time you struggle with money and the harmful ways of the professional world, go check out a library. Next time you struggle with time and have no control over its value, go check out a library. And while you're at it, check out a book.